Welcome back to the technical review course on virtualization and infrastructure migration. We're going to talk about introduction to virtualization to know a bit more on what are we going to use for our workloads in this series of videos. And first of all, what is the origin of everything? We used to have workloads running on servers and servers used to have, and still have, of course, CPU, memory, storage, network, I mean, all these resources that go together that you can use in a server that connects to the rest of the world and provides the service that the application running on it is intended to do. So we have these resources and we, when we need more resources, normally we add CPU, we add memory to the server, we add disks to the server, and we may add also in network interfaces to the server to increase its, its capacity and its uh, capabilities. So sometimes the servers grow too big and we needed to have several services on them, the same server. So what do we do? Let's slice it. I mean, not, not like really slice it like with a, a, an ax or a knife, but uh, slicing it uh, logically, like using an amount of memory and an amount of storage and an amount of network for one task and making this task independent one from the other. So this is how we started creating virtual machines. To slice the capabilities of a server, what you do is that you create a virtual hardware so you can install your operating system on that virtual hardware and then use a percentage of the capabilities of that server. So let's say that in this case we have three virtual machines. Machine A would have like 10% of the resources, Machine B would have like 40% of the resources, and Machine C would have like 20% of the resources. So this is great. But normally for critical applications, we wouldn't have a, a server, we would have a cluster. And we'll have several servers with capabilities such as CPU, memory, storage, network, and so on. And the thing is that once one of the nodes in the cluster, one of the servers in the cluster fails, these workloads could run or keep running on the other servers. So this is very useful to keep the available the services that are running on top of them. So once we have a cluster, we can also slice it and then use part of the capabilities of the cluster for virtual machines. The same way we create an instruction layer in which we create virtual hardware, we put an operating system inside and we put the application on top of the operating system. So we share the resources. So this is neat. What else can we do? Well, we can add many servers. We can add plenty of servers, like 10 or 20 or 25 or 100 servers in a cluster. And we have this slicing, and then we can move one virtual machine from one hypervisor, which is a server in a cluster in a virtualization environment, to another hypervisor. So whenever we need to do something to one of these servers, it's pretty straightforward to move all the routines to other hypervisors, go to this machine and, for example, fix a disk that is broken. You just remove it, add the new disk, rebuild the RAID, and you're running again. The thing is that when you have different platforms, it's not that easy to move the VMs from one place to another. But this is what we're working on. So the good thing about this is that this virtualization, modern virtualization, adds some goodies that have become like a must for operations. For example, snapshots. You have a VM, you need to upgrade it, so you take a picture of it, and then if something goes wrong, you roll back to the previous state. This is, I mean, completely necessary. And then the VM migration, to be able to move one VM from one hypervisor to the other without having to stop it completely live, without losing service. And also VM storage migration, because sometimes the storage gets full and you add the storage, but they are not connected one to the other, so you can move the storage of that VM to the new storage easily and then balance that storage. You have, of course, simple network management. You create VLANs, assign them to networks within the virtualization, and then you connect the VMs with virtual network interfaces cards to the right VLANs by selecting them easily. You can do also load scheduling, which is pretty convenient when you have a cluster of a service, like let's say an application server, that you have like three virtual machines running the same thing, so you want them not to be running on the same physical server. So you can schedule them. And you can do deployments much, much faster by creating virtual machine images that you can use as templates to create new virtual machines, which speeds up all provisioning. So this is what makes uh, virtualization a great improvement 
over traditional clusters with bare metal machines. And with this is what we want to work, to be able to move these workloads running our virtual machines from one platform to another. So that concludes the introduction to virtualization. We'll see you in the next video.